What's going on guys, welcome back to Spare Change. Today we've got in Sony's first soundbar with Dolby Atmos, the HTST 5000. I'm going to run through the setup and give a quick audio listen and give you my thoughts. But let's open it up first and see what's inside. The ST5000 retails for $14,99.99. It's an 800 watt 7.1.2 channel soundbar with Atmos decoding and high resolution audio playback. It has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi enabled streaming. Multi-room audio is supported with Sony's Music Center app for supported wireless speakers and soundbars. Inside we get a quick start guide, an accessories box with manuals, an HDMI cable, remote, and batteries. Inside is the subwoofer and a neatly wrapped metal speaker grill. Underneath that is the sound bar. The grill has good weight to it and attaches to the bar using 12 strong magnets. The subwoofer has an output of 200 watts. It's pretty hefty at 31 pounds and has a 7 inch driver inside. It syncs up wirelessly to the sound bar so placement should be a breeze. On the rear of the sub is the attached power cord and what looks to be a service connector, power button, and secure link button to sync to the soundbar. There's also rubber pads on the bottom to keep it from sliding on the floor. On the front are seven two and a half inch drivers, three of which are two-way coaxial full range speakers and an LCD display. On top are upward facing Atmos speakers for overhead effects. Buttons for power, input selection, music service, and volume buttons are located up top as well. On the right side are NFC for one touch pairing and a USB port under the flap. The metallic grill is easily removed and attached magnetically. On the rear are three HDMI 2.2 inputs and one output along with a LAN connection. In the center rear is an IR blaster, power cord, and holes for wall mounting. I'll be setting this up to the Sony 65A1E television. I'm just going to run through this quick setup. Here's network selection. Looks like we get Chromecast audio built in. Let's check out the settings, see if there are any updates. Screen settings. Looks like only auto or 480p for options. I'll just keep it on auto then. Here's color space and video direct. Let's check out audio settings. Here you can put in your seating distance from the soundbar. Here are speaker level trims for front heights and the subwoofer. We have a test stone generator here so you can use this with a sound level meter. And ceiling height distance. Let's check Bluetooth settings. Here's a setting that lets you either receive sound from a mobile device or send out sound to Bluetooth headphones for some late night personal listening. Now let's pair the subwoofer. So just hit the link button and the light will flash orange. Once it's paired, it will stay solid. Now for HDMI signal format, make sure it's on enhanced if you're feeding it a high quality 4K source so you can pass HDR through it. The rest is self-explanatory so pause if you need to.
I'm just going to run a quick Atmos demo here. Obviously, you won't really be able to hear what it sounds like. One thing I noticed, I wasn't able to bring up on the display what format it's receiving. It only said HDMI. Otherwise, the Atmos effect was very convincing. You can hear sounds coming from right in front overhead if there were supposed to be sounds up there. You also get a good wide presence of front and virtual sides. At times I could hear sounds almost wrapping around the room. The sub had very good low end that you could feel and highs were crisp and detailed. The only issue I heard was the lack of mid-range. Voices didn't have much weight to them. Male voices seemed anemic and lacked energy. Otherwise, this is a very clean sounding soundbar that'll get you the Atmos experience in spaces where mounting overhead speakers is impossible. Now, if you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. If you love the video, give it a thumbs down. Don't forget to follow us on social media and subscribe. And we'll see you guys again in the next video.